We saw in the previous video how the bootstrap procedure works in a particular example. So we looked at baby birth weights. Now we're going to talk just a little bit more generally, so hopefully that you can see how it applies in different settings. So our general goal, or our general setup, is that we have a random sample of size n, and we want to create a confidence interval for some estimator theta hat. So all of this bootstrap distribution stuff is going to hinge on the fact that we have a random sample. So since we have a random sample, then that means that our random sample represents the population. It's a mini version of that population. So we can pretend like we're drawing from the population by using our original sample and resampling from it. So we would like to create a confidence interval for this estimator theta hat. And that would require us having the sampling distribution for a theta hat. We do not have the sampling distribution for a theta hat. So what we need to do is simulate the sampling distribution for theta hat. So if we create this bootstrap distribution for theta hat, that will approximate our sampling distribution for theta hat. OK, so how do we actually create this bootstrap distribution? So this bootstrap distribution is really important because, like we said, this is what is approximating our sampling distribution for theta hat. So how do we do it? We need to do these two steps a large number of times, like 10,000 times, 100,000 times. Pretty much the more the better, um, but you should do it like at least 10,000 times. OK, so what you need to do is look at your original sample and randomly draw n observations from it with replacement. So now you've created one resample. It has size n, just like your original sample. And now we go and calculate whatever that statistic is, theta hat. And we go and write it down somewhere safe and keep track of it because we're going to need it for later. You wouldn't actually write it down. You just have like R or whatever software you're using. Keep track of it. So you would do these steps over and over and over, maybe 100,000 times, 10,000 times, something like that. And that would create your bootstrap distribution. All right. Then if you, for example, like plotted your bootstrap distribution in an R, maybe it would look something like this as an approximation of the histogram for theta hat. So maybe this is like one, two, three, four, something like that. And then our usual in a histogram is frequency up there on the y-axis. OK, so this is our approximation for the sampling distribution. This is our bootstrap distribution. So it approximates our sampling distribution of theta hat. And remember what that means is when we talk about a sampling distribution of theta hat, that's saying if we chose the same size sample, whatever n is, and we collected samples from the original population over and over and over and over and calculated theta hat for each one of those, here's the distribution of all the theta hats that we could get. So we've simulated that by creating our bootstrap distribution. Um, now we can use it to do something like calculate confidence intervals. So a usual thing to do, say you want a 1 minus alpha confidence interval, then a simple thing to do is just find, find the quantile so that you have 1 minus alpha in the middle and then alpha over 2 in one tail and alpha over 2 in the other tail. So we look for whatever this point is and this point so that we can have alpha over 2 in that tail and alpha over 2 in this tail. So in R, if you're doing this, this is as simple as using the quantile function. 
Okay, so that's a simple way to get the confidence interval of whatever level of confidence you want for whatever this estimator is theta hat. Um, so this is what we'll usually be doing just because it's really simple to find quantiles in R. Another thing that you could do that would actually create a shorter confidence interval, especially if it's like a skewed distribution. So imagine your distribution looks more like something like this. So maybe if we had like standard deviation or variance or something like that, this is what it could look like. So again, we're talking about plotting the histogram of all the theta hats. This is our bootstrap distribution for all the theta hats. A shorter confidence interval would be if we, imagine we take this flat line, no slope, and we just keep pushing it down until finally we have one minus alpha in the middle. So we, we push this line down, maybe it started up here, but that would have only been too little in the middle. And so we keep pushing this line down until we have one minus alpha in the middle. Then we would look for whatever this number is here and whatever this number is here. And these would be the endpoints of our one minus alpha confidence interval. So we can see that would be shorter than having alpha over two in this tail and alpha over two in this tail. Um, if we wanted to have alpha over two in each one of those tails, then this would be more of our cutoff, and then this one would be shifted to the right. So it would create a longer confidence interval when we use this quantile method, and we would have a shorter confidence interval if we had this method where we are pushing down this invisible line until finally we have one minus alpha in the middle there.